Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey Mark, uh, thanks for your email and pictures. Um, you know, in the front, especially on the rock wall, I mean, I think there's definitely some trees that you kind of want to accent that would fit into this, uh, that would make everything really look good from this viewing angle. Um, I will mention some things on the house because I think that'll make it pop too. Um, I don't know if you can get uh, lights over to, you know, these trees over here, but I mean, this becomes part of this viewing angle. So it's not just the rock wall, even having that lit up with some up lights um, is still going to really look nice, especially if you have the house, this and that. I mean, that's a really nice viewing angle. You even throw some up lights on some trees down here and it just kind of expands that viewing angle and makes it um, makes it really stand out. So, I mean, with that, what I would do is, I mean, I would definitely try and get an up light on this tree here. If it's in the bed, um, you can just use a standard up light like this guy here. Uh, I will talk to you about some wash lights, maybe some path and garden lights and, and where to use those. But an up light like that on a tree like this for sure. For the rock wall, what I would do is I would use wash lights. Wash lights are basically designed for that. They're a um, less intense wider angle light than an up light. Um, and they're, they're designed, you know, pretty much for the rock wall. So what I would do is I would just, and it doesn't really matter how many you have. I don't think you have to light every square inch of it. But I think as long as you have even spacing uh, across the rock wall. So here you might put four of those wash lights kind of spaced out evenly across the bottom here, maybe even five if you wanted to. Like I said, it, it's more dependent on just getting the right spacing. Um, but I'd say probably like four to five on this bottom section here, um, just kind of in here that's kind of shining up and grazing uh, the rock wall areas. And then I would do the same thing on the second uh, tier. Maybe here you only put like three you put one there, one there, and one there. I would definitely try and get an uplight though on this tree because it's going to light the tree and um, it's going to light the rock wall. And then same thing on this tree here. I would probably do the, the same thing. So uh, yeah, you definitely have those lit. Uh, you'd have the rock wall lit kind of all the way across. Uh, and I probably wouldn't do on this top section because it's just going to be tough to see and it is lower. And if you put those wash lights, they're going to be shining right at you. So what you might want to do instead is put you know, a couple path and garden lights um, that are just shining down onto the rocks uh, up here. So I would maybe do that, maybe three or four of those across there. And then the other thing I would do is I would try and highlight the house now with some up lights. Um, I love a house like this with the kind of the nice uh, entryway and the white columns, um, the porch area. And typically what I would do is I would take that up light that I showed you. Um, so this guy here, and I would have kind of these pillars or the columns of the house lit up as well as across the front of the garage. So what I would do is I would have an up light kind of in here that kind of highlights the front column here. Um, I would have another one kind of here. I would have another one here and I would have another one here. And then it's going to really nicely balance out the front. Uh, the nice thing is that light hits that top soffit area, kind of lights it up, uh, makes it look like you have some soffit lighting, but you don't really uh, it's a nice subtle light. It also gives you some reflective light down on the beds here. Um, so I would definitely do that with kind of four across there. And then to kind of continue that theme, I would get an up light kind of on this tree, but also to highlight the house. And then also one in the middle, um, fairly close to the house. The biggest mistake I see people do whenever they're especially trying to highlight um, and accent the house is they bring the light too far back and they shine it at the house. And really what you want to do is get it a little bit closer and having it shine more upright. Um, and it just does a better job of kind of grazing um, and and highlighting the house better without creating a big hot spot. So that's how I would handle uh, the front of the house and this area. Um, and then if you really want to, you know, kind of elevate things and, and take it to the next level, you could also mount uh, an up light on the second story of the garage here, as well as probably an up light here that catches this second story peak. And it's actually quite easy to do. We have these um, gutter mounts that basically all you have to do is just run the wire either inside or behind the, the downspout, run your wire across the gutter. Um, the gutter mount fits right in the gutter. You mount your light into there as opposed to like a ground stake. And then you just have that kind of shining up on this area. And then you would do the same thing over 
here and then that would really elevate it because now you got all tiers of your yard including the low rock wall the front of the house and the second uh, story peaks I mean if you really wanted to go nuts you could also mount one up here but I think even if you just did those two peaks would really make it stand out uh, and then like I said I mean if you can I would uh, and it, it might be challenging it might not be doable because um, I mean if you have some sleeving under here great or if you're thinking of maybe doing uh, more landscape around the back then you could add uh, these trees but I mean if you could accent those uh, with maybe some in-ground well lights that go right in the grass so you can just mow over them uh, with a little bit higher intensity uh, brightness than the ones that are on the house and that you're going to use over here and just have like two of those kind of highlight this tree uh, that would really make that stand out along with the driveway and then you could also you know accent a few of the the trees and stuff along this back wall area too and it just makes uh it just makes it very visually inviting with light but um, obviously that's a lot so hopefully it gives you some ideas uh, let me know what you think you can always just go on the website and kind of uh, start adding those different lights and stuff to your cart um, and then you know you're probably looking at a transformer and wiring kit something like this the only thing is this comes with 250 feet of wire and I have a feeling you probably need closer to 500 for that project um, it's just there's you know going to be a fair amount of lights uh, but this comes with everything you need um, so you can play around on the website a little bit um, and kind of add those different things to your cart you can add extra wire all that kind of stuff or just let me know what you're thinking if you like those ideas what you do like what you don't we can customize a kit and kind of work with you from there um, and it, also if you just have any other questions mark please let me know hey guys we're we're getting pretty close to getting wrapped up this project um, we've got all our lights in so basically you know our first step was we uh, we took a design and we went and chose all our lights. What was cool about this one is, uh, you know, this is a client who actually had um, emailed in pictures for a free consultation and because it was on Vancouver Island, we were able to do it. So uh, we looked through all those pictures, we gave him some recommendations uh, and then we gave him a price to actually install it, which is not always the case because some of you guys are, are far away. I wish we could, but we just can't. But um, what was cool is then we got on site and a lot of what we had determined from the pictures were very accurate. So we already had a pretty good idea of what we were going to do, how many lights, and we were able to size the transformers beforehand. But sometimes, and it's often the case, we get on site and there's some things we want to add or some things we want to take away. So, um, so that's how we go and then determine our transformers. So we'll always try and, and determine that based on a design. Um, but the key is just leave it a little bit bigger if you're not sure because you always want to make sure you have enough room and if you're using an LED system um, it's not as crucial that you get it uh, the exact transformer as when you had a halogen system with a halogen system you had transformers that had multiple taps and you really had to be careful that you were getting the right voltage to the right lamps or you were just gonna burn them out a lot quicker but if you're uh, if you're getting an LED system, a lot of times you'll see on the box it'll say that your LED is usually rated from 9 volts all the way to 15 volts, which means it's going to operate within that range. Whereas halogens was usually between 11 and 12, so you really had to do your math um, with LED that eliminates a lot of that. So a general rule of thumb, and if you're if you have more questions about sizing your transformer and voltage drop and all that. Go to YouTube and just search Lighting Doctor Voltage Drop. There's a video where I go into a lot of detail and show you a chart and everything. Uh, but general rule of thumb, uh, on 300 feet of wire, you can put up to 100 watts and not really have any voltage drop issues as long as you're using a larger transformer like this that has a 15 volt tap, which means you're starting at 15 volts and all the way down the line you might get down to 10 volts, but that's still going to run that light and it's still going to be as bright as it should because that bulb is rated from 9 to 15 volts again assuming it's a it's a good one um, that's why we always say not all products are created equal so you have to do some due diligence there uh, we do a lot of that uh, in our kits but um, just just buyer beware um, so basically it's really simple to go and size your transformers you take all your lights you add up all the wattage of all the lights so if you have a bunch of five watt up lights and you've got um, let's call it 20 of them well that uh, that comes out to a hundred watts, but you want to size that transformer a little bit larger because depending on the efficiency of that bulb, uh, the more efficient it is, the closer that that actual wattage is going to be to, to five watts. But the less least efficient or the lesser efficient bulbs are going to sometimes be almost 10 watts, even though the box says 10 watts, and that's something called their their actual it's called their VA their actual wattage. 
Um, so you gotta be careful about that. That's why we always say size it a little bit more, but general rule of thumb, add up all your lights, um, add up all your lights and then size your transformer 20, 30, 40% more than that. Uh, if you don't wanna have to worry about voltage drop, get a good transformer that has a 15 volt tap and you can run 100 watts on 300 feet of line without running into that issue of uh, losing any brightness at the end of the line. But that's basically it when it comes to a transformer. The only other thing I was gonna mention is the timer options. Now, um, you know, you see a lot of the dinosaur looking um, timers where it's this little digital or this little um, analog wheel that you got all these little tabs you gotta stick out. They got these, um, these different digital timers that you gotta be a rocket science to operate. The nice thing is that a transformer like this um, we use one of these, it's from, uh, it's from Wyon, it's a Wi-Fi timer, but basically there's, there's dozens of these on the market, and if you have a smart home system, have a look if they already have an outdoor plug, because that's all this is, it's basically a Wi-Fi plug for your outdoors, and all you have to do is now, when you go plug this transformer into your GFCI receptacle, um, all you're going to do is you're going to flip this into the on position, so you're just going to leave your transformer in all the time. But this little thing here where usually you would have a photocell, which again, I highly recommend against because photocells just fail all the time. You have to have your transformer in the right position because it's in a dark shaded position. Your lights are gonna be on all the time. So all those kinds of things. But <laughs> to get back to it, basically where it says to plug in your timer or your photocell or whatever, all you have to do is unplug that, plug in your, your Wi-Fi plug, whether that be this one or whether that be one uh, based on the smart home system you have. Go and plug it into there and then you plug this guy into into your um, to your plug-in and then you just close that up, leave it in the on position and then you can go and operate everything from your Wi-Fi plug. And usually most of these, you don't need a hub anymore. Um, they have their own app so you can just go download it and it usually walks you through how to do that in two or three steps and all of a sudden now you have a, a Wi-Fi landscape lighting system but you haven't paid tons and tons of money for it. Another thing that we do a lot of times if, because I get asked all the time, well, I want my front yard, my backyard, I want to be able to zone them different so I can turn them on at different times, kind of like a sprinkler system. There, there is some really good systems that are out there that do that. Um, they tend to be quite costly. They're great systems, but it depends on your budget. If you don't want to do that, and spend that kind of money on a system, just go and use a separate transformer. You know, in this case, on this project, that's what we're doing. We've got one of these for the backyard and one for the front. Luckily, because we have this timer, we can run both those controllers on the exact same app and set them up with totally different schedules, uh, which is what's cool about going and adding something like this to your transformers. And it doesn't have to be this one. It can be basically any outdoor Wi-Fi plug that you can go plug into here is gonna work. So make your life a lot easier, turn your transformer into a Wi-Fi system, go and size it properly, be safe, build it, um, select it larger in case you wanna add on down the road too. So hopefully that helps answer your transformer questions. But like I said, if you need more definition on uh, voltage drop and stuff, go to uh, YouTube and search uh, voltage drop lighting doctor and I guarantee you'll find something. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.